administering the resident from the Herb Hospital. So in front of you, you can see this will just be the order that we're speaking to, and we'll speak to a tack time of 20 minutes. This is our team. We named ourselves Team Wash Me, Don't Lose Me, because there were high numbers of laundry that went missing, and we'll just introduce ourselves as we go along. Um, our project form, um, the key thing to know is that from February 1st to 17th, we got to sign our project form, um, we had 47 items that rather than going from the Herb Bassett home to our laundry services, they actually went where the regional laundry is supposed to go and then had to get returned back to our laundry services. So they were missing, they weren't returned in time. Uh, looking at our target progress baseline, um, the space for our 5S project, we were looking at the soil utility room on Paradise Path, and it was using 50 square feet. There was 145 inventory items in there, and the part travel distance was uh, 1,257 feet for the laundry that was going the wrong route. And then we had a number of defects. So about three times um, per day, there was three items of regional laundry that went into personal, and there was about five personal laundry items that went into regional. So, and pass it to you. Here is our, um, my name is Neil Falk, I'm Chief Information Officer, <coughs> and I was sub-team lead for this RPIW, Watch Me, Don't Lose Me. Um, this is our, our, our value, our pre-Kaizen value stream map. And we started from the time the CCA exit, exits the room with the clothes to the time the clothes re are returned back to the actual resident. And what we found was that the process was, is fairly set and fairly standard, but there was a lot of Kaizen opportunities for the actual project for the RPIW. So this project we focused very much on the Kaizen rather than trying to increase the, or decrease the time spent doing the process. We also looked at uh, a pre-Kaizen of our labeling of her Bassett resident laundry. So one of the key challenges for the team was that the labeling comes in and it's not done in a timely fashion. And so we actually looked at that process as well. We calculated tack time based on um, a machine, not and so much a person, but machine. And so we focused on the laundry machine. And so if we look at an 8.5 hour day plus our breaks and, and lunch hours, uh, we have 450 minutes. We do six loads in laundry per, per day, and so our tack time becomes six, 75 minutes. Our pre-Kaizen Muda wheel, uh, what we did find was that there was a lot of defects uh, that happened within the process, and then a lot of processing errors that were happening. And so those are the two areas that we focused on from our side. Once our PKUA data spoke to the fact that uh, some of the problems we're having is due to the fact that we have one laundry service worker, um, one permanent and, and a couple casuals, and uh, we also have 200 CCAs. So part of where we have to do is through this project is working with that as a PQA data. Hi, I'm Tony. I work as a CCA in Golden Hill. Uh, in this idea shape, you can see that everybody is getting confused about the bins and the order of the bins. Then <coughs> there's an idea created. All the bins has to be, each bins has to be color coded and the bins placed in a standardized order and use the anders, which helps everyone to easily identify the bins. Next, this is the pre Tyson picture. We took it before. Uh, this, this is the practice we were doing before. And in the spaghetti diagram, everybody, everyone can see how the misplaced laundry item stalls. It goes from Kerbasset to the regional laundry, and from the regional laundry, it goes to the laundry services, and from the, it has to come back to the Kerbasset. In the whole process, <coughs> it takes 838 steps. So we created a work standard for placing laundry and the garbage bins. This four bins has to be on the middle of the bin, middle of the wing, and the personal laundry bin has to be color coded. <coughs> it starts from the left. From there, it has to the black color coded bin should be left to that. There, there are two regional bins left to right to that. I'm sorry. 
this is the spaghetti diagram. We can compare the spaghetti diagram now and the initial spaghetti diagram. In this one, we remove, uh, there is no personal laundry items are going from her faucet to the North SAS laundry. So we reduce the steps from 800 and something to 253 steps, which is a 70 percentage improvement. <coughs> This is the second idea sheet we were dealing with. In this one, the laundry staffs are getting um, the soiled personal clothes with fecal matters and the dry blood stains. Uh, and the another practice we were following in uh, in, the, in our units were we were rinsing the soiled personal clothes in the toilet and we taking uh, that I mean we sending that to the personal laundry. So we created a work standard for rinsing clothing, soiled with uh, BMs, vomits, and uh, the urine, and with uh, blood stains, uh, uh, according to the infection control recommendation. And in this one, the solids, all the solids, has to be removed in the toilet. Then they have to take it from the to the dirty room where it has to be rinsed and send it back to the laundry room and the uh, uh, blood stain clothes can rinse in the resident sink. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rosemary. <coughs> I'm the full-time student at the laundry home. Um, Pre-Kaizen, we did not have a set, set of order of hanging clothes. All our staff hung everything different, pants, shirts, mixed up in with pajamas, whatever. Um, we set a work standard where the pants are in front, the shirts, the jackets, and ending with the pajamas. So the next person would have their slacks, shirts, pajamas, like everything, it's all in order. So in between the, the rings, when the CCAs grab their laundry, they're grabbing slacks and pajamas. If they happen to grab an extra pair of pants, they know that goes to the next person. So there's no confusion, no loss of laundry, no misplaced laundry. We had a lost and found um, at one point, it used to hang on the end of our rack, of our laundry rack that we would deliver to the pods. It would travel from her basset laundry to the pods, maybe to rec, maybe to sixth floor, come back to her basset laundry. I didn't know what to do with it. Everybody kind of wandered around. So we set a standard of one area, designated area, right off of the <coughs> basset laundry elevator. It's a full rack. Clearly labeled lost and found. So anything that's labeled fell off, misplaced, closer, or, or donated, not sorry, do not donated, misplaced, lost items hang there. And I think that's about it. Thank you. My name is Melissa Hernick, and I'm uh, carried on Paradise Path at the Her Bassett. And one of the things that I was involved in is the um, sheet for sending the laundry down to be marked. The old, we would just write it on a sticky note, marked for someone. The laundry service worker would get it and have no idea which room or anything. We developed a standard form um, of how to do it. And then we also did a standard of how that form is to be filled out properly um, so that when the laundry service worker gets it, she knows the details of what needs to be done with those clothes for mending, marking, etc. Um, as well as, um, as um, at the admission, we also did a um, standard work form for that before it used to be just a list and we hope that all those items were labeled. Now we have a standard work form that goes down when the person <coughs> is admitted and the family will fill out the form and then we have no problems knowing what was sent down. It gets sent back up with the proper label and the name. And there's a process for updating that um, admission list for when new items do come in and we're sending them down and they come back up. It's all updated so we know <coughs> where those all belong. <laughs> My name is Darcy Lude. I work with quality uh, management. I was a participant with this uh, RPIW team. Well, miscommunication is uh, a root cause of uh, many errors, and, and just as with laundry, between laundry and the, uh, the pods, miscommunication around room changes, admissions, new admissions, 
uh, facility changes and, and so forth, uh, laundry would not be included on you know, which resident has now moved out, which resident needs new, new labels immediately or needs their clothes unlabeled and relabeled for a room change. So, so the, uh, the clothes in the wrong place and untimely creates a lot of lost items and misplaced items. So standard work, creating standard work uh, around communication uh, and evolving that with IT. We've come up with, uh, with a very simple solution. We, we recycle <coughs> the computer, which uh, gives laundry uh, access to an email account, HB Laundry at PAPHR. They will be included along with the environmental service workers when they get room change over, over notifications immediately that they, they can expect, oh, we need to label this bundle of clothes or de-label it. It happens uh, at the right time. So the resident uh, has their clothes immediately. Uh, so the standard work along with all the other pieces of standard work uh, we've developed for this project uh, will be, will be uh, rolled out and uh, on a multi-skills training checklist for all of the SCAs, RMs who need to be aware of this process. We've begun the process uh, between laundry service and, and the pods and it will continue with uh, the process over the managers. Thank you. Hi, my name is Margaret Kerning, I'm Roy, and I'm very pleased to be part of the team representing family and residents. The issue that I'm looking at here is that residents and families uh, are as of yet unaware of any of the changes that have been made. Um, family and residents often put laundry into the tubs and they don't know where to place it. They, it causes defects because they don't they make mistakes. So we developed a family letter and a resident bulletin. This is the letter, and that's what we sent out shortly. The information is very similar in the bulletin and the letter. We address the laundry bins and how they're set up, and the clothing inventory. As you can probably appreciate, when a family member brings a loved one to a home or to a facility, they're pretty overwhelmed with all the information that they're faced with. So this is, we hope, going to be a very useful checklist. And in the letter, we also indicate that these people, the director of care or the nursing unit manager or the contact people because uh, it's very important that you contact the right person if you have an issue. Communication such as this will hopefully serve to uh, encourage the families uh, and re the residents if appropriate to have buy-in on the process. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tina from the Happy Volunteer Department here at Victoria Hospital. I'm very pleased to have been uh, the patient rep on this wash leave, your flu's leave, laundry team. Congratulations, you've all been super, super clever. The team clean, the name assigned to Merla and I, had the task of bypassing the dirty service room in Paradise Path. The following pictures show what confronted us. There were many <laughs> unnecessary out of place, outdated items on the shelves, on the counter, and inside the cabinets. We worked our magic by quickly sorting and then simplifying a total of 145 items. Paradise Path, the staff, we thank you for helping us identify many questionable items. This made our work much easier. At the moment, Staff fridge housed in the service room found no other suitable location, so it remains where it is. <coughs> Our starting point <coughs> for the dirty service room was one out of five, and for the final score, I'll have to hand the rest of the story over to Merle. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Merle Pugh, Recreation Coordinator at Her Bassett Home Lakeland Trail Unit. After our sorting, there were 73 items removed, relocated, and repurposed, and 72 items remained. For example, we relocated items belonging to other pods or could use in other departments, such as toilet lead, burner care, electric fans, blood meter cords, and etc. The bar chart form for inventory shows 50. 51% less from the initial inventory of 145 items. The cupboards and shelves were properly leveled for easy identification. Maintenance added hooks on the wall for items to hang instead of sitting on the floor. 
Now everything in its place and easy to find. Work standard was developed and all the tools for 5S form were posted in the dirty service room on the wall. I'm happy to report our current and final score is an awesome 2.9. Here's the picture of the room, neat and clean, everything in place. Thank you. So there were a couple other tools um, pre-Kaizen that Neil and I had done in the weeks before our event week. So the standard work combination sheet, we had looked at the process of when the laundry service worker sorts the day's laundry, washes it, dries it, folds it, sorts it again, and then brings it up to the herd basket home. So this was our pre-Kaizen. And you can see on the next sheet that post-Kaizen, there wasn't any change. We weren't focused on time for this one, it was about the defects, so we weren't expecting a change there. Uh, for our percent load chart, um, we had looked at the two washing machines and the dryer pre-Kaizen, and when you see the post-Kaizen again, there wasn't any change, and we hadn't really been expecting when we were focusing on the defects. Our post-Kaizen waste wheel, we eliminated 24 out of the 38 items, which was a 63% improvement. And our post-Kaizen value stream map. So, um, with regards to our time, there was a bit of a change in time. It went up a little bit. The last process is where the CCA delivers the laundry to the resident rooms. It's a new process. It only happens every three days um, for each ward. So when we looked at the two wards, it was two different wards the first time they did it. It did go up. We would expect as they get used to the process, it will go down. However, we weren't focused on the time. We were focused on defects. So you can see that a number of the starbursts we did eliminate most of them. And again, for our labeling of the resident laundry, there wasn't any change in the time. We weren't expecting there to be. We weren't focusing on time, but we did eliminate all the starters. And our newspaper, we did complete <coughs> a number of items. Um, the main thing that's left is really just the multi-skills training. You can imagine with 200 CCAs working at the Herb Bassett Home, we're not all going to reach them over a period of three and a half days. So there's a bit of multi-skills training couple maintenance items, and we focused our uh, improvements on Paradise Path, so we will need to roll out the standards we did to the other two houses as well. Finally, our post-Kaizen target sheet uh, report and, and target results sheet. I want to focus on a couple of huge improvements. We actually really reduced 26% of the actual use, our space used in the dirty service room. We were able to decrease the inventory by 50%. The parts travel distance, and that's where personal laundry was going to the regional laundry and then having to move over. That's a 70% decrease in travel, so that was a great uh, improvement. But the one that really makes is important to this RPIW, and it's because we are moving to a new laundry system, is those parts traveled uh, to the regional laundry, and we actually achieved a 0% in the last three days or zero items coming back, so we got 100% improvement. So that's huge for us uh, as a team where we can say, see the defects eliminated. So from a workshop summary, a visual consistency was a, a big thing for us, that all the bins are consistent, the handling of clothes was consistent, standardization, optimal in infection control practices, although we have infection control policies, there wasn't a lot of op, uh, optimization of those, and so being bring that in. Increased communication between the laundry services staff and that Herb Bassett staff. Uh, you know, that communication is key. Communications with the families, you know, and as we move forward, moving that to them. And, and the big one for us was residents will not lose their clothes. And again, we wanted to point out 0% of the personal laundry items were found in the regional laundry at the end of this week. So that's a huge uh, improvement. So thank you to many people, all of the Herb Bassett staff, uh, nurses, CCAs, you name it, all of our laundry service workers who were down there through that process, uh, our sponsors and our, and our process owners, uh, our KPO specialist, Cynthia Lestician, thank you, and Sensei Narita, thank you very much. Um, Interpreter Yuki, um, our family representatives and our, our volunteer server and our patient representatives, they were they were the most awesome two of the team. They really dug in. They helped us through that process. 
So I really want to give you a hands-on. Thank you very much for helping us. Our environmental services team uh, and all the teams of Wash Me, Don't Lose Me, um, IT services for putting together those things, uh, and again, our HBA resident or HBH residents um, and uh, our maintenance staff. So thank you very much.